It's a sport played in the blazing heat, the driving rain, and sometimes even snow. It's a sport that blends together the physicality of football, the strategy behind hockey, and the finesse of basketball. However, if you ask its players, they might not even consider it a sport at all. They'd call it a culture, a passion, a brotherhood. Merrimack College outside of Boston, Massachusetts, these 45 brothers forged their bonds playing lacrosse, one of the fastest growing sports in America. Do your job, stand your man, stand your man. We're here to win and we're here to you know, win a championship. That's what it's all about. Just chop it. Get a behind the scenes look at these Warriors as they fight for position in the upcoming playoffs. On three back. One, two, three, back. Coming up now on Merrimack Lacrosse. All access. Lacrosse at Merrimack has gained a reputation for athletic excellence through hard work, accountability, and family. It takes to play for Merrimack Lacrosse. I mean, it's, it's you know it's one of those things where you know it's, I think why we recruit uh, probably more meticulous than, than a lot of schools out there is you know we want to find the perfect fit. You know because to play for Merrimack, you know you obviously have to be you know uh, you know hardworking kid uh, who's willing to learn, uh, you know who's willing to be part of something, and you know be accountable to his teammates and to the coaching staff. And uh, if they come in here and they're willing to learn, and obviously they're skilled, you know, and then we're getting some of the more skilled players out there, uh, they're going to be successful here. You have to be ready to work hard. Um, a lot of schools, kids go there expecting just it's going to be an easy ride to get on the field and have fun, but the level of competition is so high at each and every position that you, if you're not working hardest, someone else is going to be working harder and get on the field. First thing I think I realized was how tight the guys were. It was just like a band of brothers, and they took me in right away. So I felt like I'd been there forever, you know, from the day I walked onto the field, everybody was really nice. And so I'm pretty proud to say I played here and, you know, if I can show my support in any way with these guys, I'm definitely going to do it, you know, and I think it kind of changed my life a little bit, you know. For an upcoming game against St. Anselm College, the week begins off the field, in the video room with the team, to get to know the opposition. All right, you do a good job here. Now, Jordan Tiger, where are you? All right, you gotta step in the shooting spot. I mean, you, that's, that's the number one thing. That's called just basic rotation. Bam, you see your guy leave, you can't go out. You gotta go in. Nice look to the road, all right, we bobbled, but again, that's, that's one of those spots where we gotta be able to take advantage of because we draw the rotation the entire way around. From there, it's out to the practice field to sharpen their skills for the upcoming battle. Hey, fellas, all right, let's go. Hey, we're going to be a little more um, uh, competitive today, I guess, than yesterday, you could say. Mentally, remain focused up just like yesterday, okay? We're going to recap some stuff today. We're going to let you guys get after each other a little bit today as well, get the blood flowing again. All right, guys, tomorrow, huge, huge game, all right? Make sure today is a efficient practice. Get through everything, make sure it looks good, take pride in it looking good, and just be ready to roll tomorrow. Good? Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Hey, let's get right in the box diamond. Let's get that fire and right long passes from the uh, defense. All right, let's go on three Mac. One, two, three. Mac. Oh, baby, I'm with you. Get low, get low, get lower. Who's one? The problem is once you start pursuing hard. He will come back underneath. He's got that move in his repertoire as well. So when he goes right, you want to stay on that back hip. Who's where? Who's where? Who's over? Sink over! Sink over! If this looks intense, it's nothing compared to the preseason team event nicknamed Judgment Day. This Merrimack tradition is coordinated by the program a company who works with the lacrosse team to improve their mental, physical toughness through hard work and eliminating excuses. 
At the program, we believe in leadership development, team development, personal development through shared face and adversity. Judgment Day in the program staff is that adversity. So the idea is to build better leaders, more cohesive teams through shared facing of adversity. The program has a team that consists of mostly military special operations warriors, as well as former professional and collegiate athletes. Merrimack Lacrosse is put to the test in extreme weather conditions and carry out various team building exercises. After I've been through it in the past, like you learn that it's not more like much of a physical thing that you're trying to get out of, it's more of a team building thing. So I say this year with all the new guys, they haven't been through it yet, that going through it's going to really bring them closer to the team. I think that whole close family aspect is what you want to get out of it. After practice, the coaches hurry off to nearby Mascanament High School to support Tim Toller, who is one of the Warriors midfielders committed for fall of 2012. Merrimack is just great. The kids, we've always taken the kids up there to watch games. Uh, they're playing a great conference. Coach Morgan's doing a fantastic job over there. And uh, we're super excited to get a second kid over on the team at Merrimack. Um, you know, the Division II ball is excellent. And uh, we're glad that we can get local kids in the program. But, uh, get to compete over there and play for such a long time. Landing All-American caliber recruits like Tim has helped Merrimack Lacrosse climb to the top of Division II. Merrimack has positioned themselves where yearly battles with Division I schools for these recruits are now the norm. I would say what makes Merrimack different is, uh, you know, obviously it's a small to medium-sized school. Uh, it's got a great environment. It doesn't, it doesn't have the feel of a small school. You know, the campus is obviously spread out. It's great. There's a lot of there's great people go here, whether it be from Northeast, uh, down in New York. Uh, I picked Merrimack because it was, to me, I wanted to come to a school where it was a close community. You know, it was small enough where I'd be able to walk around and know the people and get to know everyone and be able to come to a team where I'd be able to play and compete on a level that I thought was uh, good enough to play for and I would also be able to have some fun. I picked to play for Merrimack because, uh, you know, the same reason why I picked to come here. I just, I came and just did my overnight visit and these guys were just, you know, Everybody was just having fun and laughing and, and joking and it was just such a welcoming overall feeling of a sense of team and unity and uh, you know that off the field with a sense of work and ethic and a sense of we're here to win and we're here to you know, win a championship. That's what it's all about. Being an elite lacrosse team starts off the field with the team carrying a team GPA of 3.1. Another important tenant of the warrior spirit at Merrimack is giving back to the community as a team. The Merrimack tradition stems from the foundation of service learning. Merrimack Athletics performs countless hours of community service in a given semester. The lacrosse team is best known for their work with the Adopt-a-Platoon organization. Having a military background uh, with a lot of my, my father uh, you know, fighting in Vietnam and, and, and uncles and cousins and, uh, and friends and family and whatnot. It was important to me to get, to get linked up with the military. So our first year we did something with the platoons overseas. Uh, we exchanged care packages, letters. I think uh, in terms of volunteering, we do a good job of giving back to the school and to our community. Um, sophomore year we donated to a platoon overseas and we sent them letters, so thank you letters and just support letters and some fun stuff so you know they weren't bored or just to help them out and you know give them something different. The night before a game sees many traditions played out by most players. From stringing up a stick to doing laundry or something a bit more meaningful. The only thing is uh, for every game, that's like my towel right there. This here is Rodon's Roll. That's like the slogan at my school. Like when, we, when they're cheering for us, they chant Roll, Don's Roll. So that's my high school, got a lot of pride in that. This here says Be Strong 25. I had this since my sophomore year in high school when my best friend broke his neck in a football game. And we made these bands basically to raise money for his hospital bills. And then the YL is for Yardley Love, who was one of my good friends. And she died three years ago today. And that just you know, reminds me of her. So that's like my dedication thing for the most part. But, so I touched those three before each game just kind of to remember where I came from and whatnot. 
That's my thing. Game day begins in the coach's office as the staff goes over their final strategy for the impending contest. I also think uh, we got to talk to those guys before the game about jumping too. Like if Nick jumps, we got to make sure that they, if, they, if eight's facing off, they're going to push. So they're going to come out, 22 gets off. You know, so eight will push and they come down six on five. We got to make sure we're zoned up. Um, you know, coming in, it's, you know, it's late in the year. Everybody's fighting for, you know, a spot, you know, whether it be any 10 tournament or, you know, possibly the Final Four if we, you know, if we're fortunate enough to make it there. But, you know, it starts tonight, like we said, in the locker room. I mean, it's, it's playoff season for everybody in the top 10. I mean, if you're in the top 10 and you're still, you know, got a couple of good games on schedule, and this is obviously one of them, you know, and, and you got to go out and perform. And I think the guys are ready. We know what we're doing. If we communicate and we possess on offense and we communicate and we listen to our goal on defense, we are an excellent team, okay? We've basically been put in a position now where we have to be even better. And I was saying this to one of the guys today, that's when this team plays their best. When this team's backs against the wall and they feel like they got something to prove, that's when this team comes to the occasion, all right? They come out here and we say, you know what? We have nothing to prove to anybody but the people in this room. So trust the guy next to you, all right? And we come out with a W, all right? Any questions on anything? All right? All right, so let's close them up. Like we always say, these games, guys, first five minutes is going to dictate a lot. All right, teams like this want to get up. They want to run their style. Okay, we're going to kill them, like Coach said, with patience and good possessions. And guess what? At the end of that good possession, when they felt like they played great defense for two minutes, and it ends with a goal, and then Maggio wins a faceoff, we're right back on offense. That's incredibly demoralizing for a team. Energy's up today, big time up. All right, let's go on through, Mac. One, two, three. Yeah. Killer instinct, all right? That playoff instinct. That first five minutes of this game, we own. We're at home, okay? We've worked harder than that. All right, let's go. Bring it. Let's go, guys. Let's go. 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 came out firing I mean you know we it was probably the first game of the year that I believe we you know we played aggressive but also really smart in that first half and uh, ball moved well everybody was hitting their shots I mean you know I think four or five different guys scored in the first half uh, you know just all in all a team effort and, and I think it was one of those where we stayed aggressive but like I said we were taking the right shots and we were certainly hitting them. You know we put up seven in the first half that's pretty much that's pretty much the best you can do. Coming out strong like that for any team you know just keeps our you know, we're out high and going into the second half, you know, we wanted to carry that over. Despite the lead, Coach Morgan was weary of putting up such a large lead against a strong opponent this early in the contest. Guys, listen up. We talk about this all the time. The sign of good teams is that they can close out games. All right, the sign of good teams is when they have a team on the ropes, they can put them away. All right, the first five minutes is going to dictate if this game is going to be over or if it's going to be a dog fight. They're going to come out to fight, okay? They're not going to roll over. Double 50 yard line, straight down line, stay off their backs, finish this half. Double oh, patience, baby! Oh, oh, hey, patience on offense, over communication on defense. Okay, let's go. On three, Mac. One, two, three, Mac! When 
you're up that much and you have all the momentum and, and the team comes back on you, it, a little bit of panic amongst the fans and the players and a little bit the coaches also. So. Worst fears are realized as a balanced attack from St. Anselm chips away at the Merrimack lead. Guys, again, just do your jobs. On that wheel, we were not beat, there was no slide, and yet you and whoever the hell else guy was up top are five yards off your hand. You get a little, you know, a little more tense and, and tight as a group and a little nervous as, as the other team comes back, but, uh, you know, they, they continue to do their job down the stretch and they, they certainly had to get a couple of big stops. With 37 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, the unthinkable finally happens. Immediately, things go from bad to worse just 15 seconds later, as St. Anselm puts a dagger in the hearts of the Warriors by putting in a tie-breaking goal. No, I mean, it kinda, you kind of take it on your shoulders as, like, as like the group of defense, but um, I mean, I don't think for a second any of us thought the game was over. I think that's like what was huge about it. With just 22 seconds remaining and their playoff hopes on the line, the Warriors methodically rely on instinct to salvage the game. Nick Maggio needs to win this faceoff to keep the Warriors' chance alive. did not want to lose that game. I don't think I've ever seen him dodge that hard in my life. He came flying right at his man, uh, kind of hesitated to the high side, rolled back and just ripped one top right. Probably only about 10 feet to go in there at a chance. I mean, obviously from a defensive point of view, it's a great feeling to know that, I mean, we let down the team letting up a goal, but you know, the offense came back and helped us out and tied it up and we knew going into OT, we would need to step it up if we wanted to win the game. A five-minute overtime period will decide the team's fate for the season, a task that falls to the defense for over three minutes of the period. Hey, defensively, listen. Defensively, we're becoming... Oh, no, 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 no. Settle down. Stay on your man. Do your job. Stay on the hand. Off ball, they're looking like we said. They're looking for those backside lobs because everybody's trying to do too much. Do your job. Stay on your man. Stay on the hand. Stop. Our strategy, and like always, is defensively stay composed and... You know, even if they get a long possession, you know, just um, make them take the shots we want them to take. And if we have a chance to take the ball away and get it up to the offense, you know, we need to do that. Finally, a turnover gives the offense a chance to work. After a few missed opportunities, junior Greg Mala finds himself with the ball with under 10 seconds to go. Um, I mean, I had dodged the kid earlier in the game and I knew I could uh, give him a high step and go low and uh, I just did it and ran as fast as I could and I got to that, so. Well, that's why we play the game. You know, that's why we woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning and to the rest and everything. Time you're going to be hard, but you got to fight through it, and that's exactly what we did. Listen, we're proud of you guys for a gutsy win, but like Coach said, we got a lot to work on, all right? And it starts tomorrow. And we bring our, yeah, it was an awesome win, but I, I want us to be, you know, a little more urgent to say, hey, we got some success. And I think we have, we get the players to do it. We have the coaches to do it. You just got to trust your teammates, like we said, do your job. Merrimack would finish second in the conference and rank fourth in the country, enough to return to the finals for the fourth straight year. The culture of hard work is nothing new at Merrimack, and this tradition of excellence, both on and off the field, will continue far into the future.